Greetings, I'm Gerolf and this is Vandil and we are the Owl Basket. So what is our topic and what's up with that? That shaggy little manual thingy. That shaggy little manual thingy is a... It's a manual thingy. Yes. So yes, it's a it's a game manual for mm. the game Street Gangs, which also is known as a Reverse the Ransom in the United States of America. So basically, yeah, this is this is something that uh, <laughs> used to come with games. It has been it's pretty beaten up. You can see there's tape. Or yeah, it. I've been taping it because. I used to read this so much, so often, whenever I wasn't playing the game, I would just open this up and... Oh, there's stamps even. Yeah, so I would open this up and I would look at it as some so, uh, all sort of nice strong images of the characters and what kind of moves they can use. No, oh, there are even the pixel graphics there, just the drawn. Yeah. Drawn like the pixel graphic versions of the characters. Yeah, so this is an old game oh. for the uh, NES, mm. as you can see here. <laughs> and uh, it used to be with pixel graphics, or the game itself is in pixel graphics, but indeed the artwork in the manual is hand-drawn. It just mm. tries to emulate the game's pixel graphics. And I would read this book and I would look at all these moves that my character can do and think about which ones are the ones that I mastered and whenever I mastered one I would put a stamp in there oh. to certify <laughs> that I managed to do that mm. and indeed there's one page here this is actually the most center centerfold page in the entire mm. manual so this one has all sort of advanced techniques and I haven't put a stamp here so I guess Mm. I never managed Show to master. Show it to the camera as well. Yeah, I never if managed to it. master them, and it has the characters. Oh, face pics. Yeah, character face pics and yeah. all the gangs in the game and how much money you get from each enemy and. Mm. You uh, circled the names for some reason. Yeah, I think I circled the names because you need to beat all of them oh. and. And in order to beat them, you of course have to find them. I think at least one, if not several of the bosses are sort of... I wouldn't say hidden, because the bosses tell where to find the next boss and who you need to beat next. Mm. But of course, back when I was playing this game, I, I wasn't very good at English. Mm. So that was a problem. And one of the bosses says that you... Uh, this is... Uh, an open world game in a sense it's more or less linear if you you can just walk, keep walking forward but you can also go back whenever you want to hmm. and one of the bosses says that you have to go back to one park and beat up a boss and I couldn't speak or understand English hmm. so I never understood that and I just kept going forward and oh. I couldn't find the boss hmm. <laughs> and that was a bit of a problem back then and of course it was a, a huge surprise when I did go back and I did manage to mm. find that one missing boss and yeah so for me back when I I used to play this game a lot and indeed back when I wasn't playing this game I was reading this manual and I was not just looking at the pictures but I was also practicing uh, drawing these characters by mm. myself and it's really nice because they are uh, sort of simple characters mm. to yeah. do mm. and and that's really the reason why this whole manual is so beat up it was just a big part of the of the game not just playing the game itself but also to enjoy the manual mm. and enjoy the world and just imagine what I'm going to be doing in the game the next mm. time that I'm going to be playing it. Yeah, but that's, that's right. basically what's going to be our topic for today. So 
swag. When you buy a game today, what do you get with the game? You get the uh, plastic carrier or the plastic cover, then yeah. you open it, there's gonna be a game. And I don't really know what are those, do they even have these kinds of these things? Yeah. Do young people even realize what they are there for? Yeah. So actually there's no game in here yeah. because we are already playing the game. Mm. But indeed, when you buy a game these days, of course, most of it is going to be digital. Mm. And that means you're not even going to be getting this. Uh, you're just going to download the game and depending on where you download the game, if it's Steam, you're not even really buying a download of the game, you're just buying a license to download the game and play the game for as long as Valve Corporation deems that you are worthy of the game, mm. so to say. But if you're buying the game physically, you get this and you get the game cartridge or the CD and then indeed there's these strange slaps here. And there are some games, modern games, who do realize what it's for. So there's space in there for a manual. Or in this mm. case, I guess this is not a manual. This is just an, a little comic about the game. Yeah, it, that particular comic, it, it features the game mechanics in, in a nutshell that you can yeah. get out of the mecha and start doing stuff with it. Uh, driver character. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty neat comic. Mm. Yeah. So of course the if you look at the major old games or majority of them, mm. what you would get indeed was the game and a manual. Here we have Dynasty Warriors 2. And there's an argument to be made that you know do, do you really need the manual with the game isn't mm. it better if the game itself is like uh, self-sufficient or whatever the word mm. is in that even if you like we brought this game uh, second hand so we were lucky it came with the manual mm. but uh, what if it didn't come with the manual i would mm, just... be just look up game fags and <laughs> well, I guess, FAQs, yeah. FAQs and get your info from there. Yeah. And that's basically what games are banking on nowadays, that people look up in the, from the internet if they are stuck in somewhere. Yeah. And but the games themselves teach people hmm. quite well nowadays. Yeah, I think that that's more or less the better option that the game is as self-sufficient as mm. possible that it teaches everything it can within the game and it's well if it's if it can do that then it's a well-designed game unless the it uses some really boring tutorials or whatever mm. but yeah that's for the most part what you get and there's another game here that i wasn't as lucky with so this is uh, ultima quest of the avatar for nes and it even uh it even advertises that it comes free 84 page full color hint book available inside. So mm. it even advertises that this game itself comes with a hint book and it's 84 pages. So I don't really know if the, uh, if that hint book is actually a hint book or if it's just basically a manual and they mm. just decided to use the word hint book mm. for it <laughs> because it gives you hints for how to play this really difficult game. Mm. I mean, this is a simplified version of the PC version, which is even more complicated, but this is still somewhat complicated even, even still. It mm. says richly illustrated too. But yeah, I wasn't as lucky with this, so I don't have the richly il illustrated hint book. And so, what I did was playing this game. I this is one of those games where, like, basically, if you know games like Mass Effect and other games where you can do good stuff and bad stuff, you can play a, as a good character or play as a more evil character. 
uh, Ultima is one of those games that it gives you all the tools to do all sort of evil things, but you're not allowed to do any of that. Mm. So you can attack civilians, you can, well, I wouldn't say destroy cities, but you can attack people who you're not supposed to, and you can say no to beggars who are asking you for money and whatever, but you're not supposed to do that. You have to actually give the beggars money and mm. not attack civilians and so on. But I had to figure that out all by myself because I didn't get the hint book. Mm. The manuals themselves aren't really... They weren't that nice. Well, I've heard some stories from people that they remember fondly the times when they bought a new game and then on, on their ride back home they would open up the menu, open up the cover and read the manual and smell the... Yes. <laughs> smell the printing... Smell. <laughs> printing ink. Yeah. Our topic is now, what is a good form of swag or stuff that comes with the game? Yeah. Is it it? We're gonna and, discuss that. Yeah, and overall just what kind of swag there is and which mm. one of them are. Yeah. Like, uh, which one ones of them are good or necessary and okay. which ones aren't. And indeed, uh, manuals, as I already showed with the Street Gangs manual, that Mm. For me, that was a big part of the uh, big part of the game as a child. Even though it does, for the most part, just tell things that could be explained in the game. Mm. And but they took the extra mile by drawing the illustrations, mm -hmm. because most of the manuals they just take screenshots of the yeah. game, and that's a little bit. Uh, and th those mug shots were there. So, uh, uh, telling you, introducing the characters that mm -hmm. you're gonna face. So that's a little step forward with making you it part of the game, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. But I do remember, like, for I think Ocarina of Time was one, one other game, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, mm. where I really remember looking at the manual very often while I wasn't playing the game. Mm. And I think that also had really nice artwork and everything. Mm. But then there's like, uh, there are some special cases for older, older games that have like uh, a, lot, a lot of swag mm. that comes with them. And the, well, I already showed the uh, NES version of Ultima Quest of the Avatar, but the uh, Ultima series by itself was pretty notorious for having all sort of swag come with it. Mm. And uh, I, sadly, we are too young <laughs> to basically, or uh, I'm too young to have bought any Ultima games new while they were still new in the shop and just released, except for Ultima 9, which I have here. And I could show some of the swag that came with that game. So. Of course, it's this is a big box. Okay, even the box itself, when you, I guess it had this opening. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I'm not gonna destroy yeah. it, but yeah, it has. I've actually taped it shut because oh. it would keep yeah, but open. It, but even the box itself opens up and shows you the world. Yeah, so this actually looks kind of like a book. Mm. That's the idea. You can see yeah. this is the side that has the sort of pages, and this is the cover side, and. Indeed, the box would open up and you would see screenshots of the game in there. And if you, well, I put this up so that you can see that it is indeed quite large. Mm, the old, old timey PC games, they always came with that large box. Yeah. So, stuff that came with the game, uh, there's two booklets that came with the game and these are at least this one. This is a pretty hefty booklet, and this shows all sort of information about the world. Mm, journal. Yes, it journal. Yeah. It says it tells about the previous games, and it even tells us what's supposed to happen in this game. So basically, <laughs> all, all the or not all the events, but basically the end event of the game has already already been prophesized 
within the game. Professors, yeah. Yeah, and you know sort of what's going to happen. Mm. And here are all the towns that you're going to go and all sort of other... There's weapons and stuff. There's I even noticed one weapon which isn't in the game mentioned in this book and there's all the enemies and there's all sort of indeed fancy illustrations mm. about all the enemies and characters and everything. Yeah, and again they're not screenshots, they're someone has went out gone out of their way to draw all these illustrations. Mm -hmm. And they are pretty neat. They yes. are in this old book printing style. Yes. And the other book is uh it's like a book of magic. So the game has magic system and this basically tries to explain how all the spells work mm. and how the mana works and everything. And it has once again hand drawn all the uh, hand drawn pictures of all the reagents that you're going to use and all the words of magic mm. that you combine to create spells. And then it has, of course, all the spells and what they do. And once again, this is, you can argue that this is information that could be in the game. Like when you open the spell book in the game, you could have all of that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. but I'll get, I'll uh, get into that topic a bit later. Mm -hmm. But uh, the last two things, so one that we don't have here because it's, uh, nailed to the wall, so yeah. to say. So it came with a cloth map of the world. Yeah, we have actually the... Oh, yeah, it's yeah, back it, here. Yeah, yeah. So that that looks really nice. And it's indeed a cloth map. Mm. So it's not just a paper. It's not just uh, like this uh, wallpaper material. Mm. But indeed it's cloth. So it feels really, really nice. And it doesn't have those creases that these, uh, yeah, folded, paper. Yeah, yeah, doesn't have the folded creases that come with all this paper material, which is a little bit of troublesome because you just can't get rid of them. Hmm. And the last thing, uh, I think every Ultima game comes with some sort of trinket. It they came with a bunch of books and the cloth map, and then trinkets. And with Ultima Nine, you get these tarot cards. So the whole point of Ultima games is that there are eight virtues and you are basically the avatar of those virtues. You are the embodiment, mm. the person who tries to follow those virtues. And with, at the start of Ultima 9, you meet a gypsy and she asks you questions about these virtues and she uses these tarot cards mm. to basically sort of predict your path okay, into that's... the future. So that's something that's actually in the game. It's yeah. kind of transported to you. Yeah. To feel and see what the... Because this is a very pixelated game. Or it's a 3D game, but it's very pixelated. So yeah. <laughs> game, you wouldn't it's see very... them as nicely as yeah. the actual printed version. So that's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. It's mm. very polygonized. So if every Ultima game comes with something that your character more or less receives or sees at the start of the game. Mm. I think uh, in Ultima 6 you start by finding this orb of moons from the ground and that's what the game comes with. You get this sort of small orb of the moons mm. and in Ultima 4 you find an ankh which is this. It's kind of like a cross with a hoop mm. at the end and that's what the game comes with. So you get a small ankh with it. And that that's a huge part of these Ultima games. And like for me, as I mentioned, uh, you could argue that everything here could be in the game and even these are in the game. Hmm. So, and once again, these, all these manual thing is they could be in the game. You could just, instead of having to take your eyes away from, from the screen to look at the spell book like this, you could just open a book in the game and you could see the same information in the game. Yes, you could do it that way and most games today do it that way. But there was 
there's something it's really hard to explain but there's something magical for me has always been about these uh, Ultima games and many PC games in general in that it doesn't feel like you're just interacting with a monitor it feels like you sort of have like this like an alchemy table mm. around you like this and you have your keyboard here mm. and and part of that experience of course is not just the books and the trinkets that you have with you but also you can argue that the uh, controllers are really handy devices because you don't need to think that much about okay what i'm going to push there so i can just use use this to interact with the game and i don't have to think about this all that much mm. but the part of the pc gaming experience for me has always been that you have that keyboard it's kind of like a control panel mm. so to say you have all these options and you don't really know what all of them do necessarily and i do remember playing a game like ultima 4 for quite some time before i realized that you can press the uh, p key to peer into a gem mm. and mm. there's just <laughs> it, it's strange that you sort of find new things about a game that are more or less basic controls and you could say that that's bad game design but at the same time it does add something to the mysteriousness of the game and the other part is of course that if you do need to mix spells and other stuff you can just you need to take your eyes away from the screen and look at the book for a while okay what what were the spell words and okay what what were the regions that i need and yeah. so on and these of course double double as material for when you stop playing the game mm, yeah. now, now you can let let's say you even go for a car ride somewhere maybe mm. you can take this or you go to school you can take your game with you but you can take this and you yeah. can read this Study while you're in you the school. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of the actual school. <laughs> yeah. Or in between, of course. Yeah. Study something that mm. actually interests you, which is which yeah. is the game. But I would say it's neat, but the game itself has to really facilitate or uh, allow you to do this sort of thing, to pause the game and look up, mm. because if it's very action-packed game where you have to really keep focus at the all, at all times, so then those kinds of manuals are gonna be kind of, especially during playing the game, yeah. pretty bad if the instructions are in there and you're playing the game, what button should I press? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, I think mm. a big a uh, big point with this is that it shouldn't be something that you're required to read beforehand. Mm. Should be something that you start playing the game and there's things that you don't understand and but the world interests you mm. and that's why you you actually want to read these books and you want to experience or mm. see what's in there and so on. Yeah, because Let's face it, studying is boring if you know it's studying, but if you pack it into a game and you start the game and you are provided these neat manuals that at least try to be, not even try, they are being from that world. They really, they're just not standard template text mm. put in the paper to save the costs. They really went out of their way to make them feel like part of the game. Yeah. To make it less... To, to make it feel less like you're studying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always the uh, the difference between uh, fun studying and boring studying is that boring studying is something that's not relevant to you. You don't really mm. see the value in it. And fun studying is always something that you see value in. Mm. Okay, I'm. I can read this, or I can read parts of it. I can look up a specific section, and now I'm going to do better. Mm. It's almost like uh, gaining a level up, or whatever. Mm. So, in that sense, it's kind of working. Uh, I guess we can talk about modern examples. So, mm. so there are some. Uh, I don't know if modern is the right word to use, but there are some uh, somewhat modern examples of 
swag that still comes with games mm. and well the most basic is or the most known are these expand or special editions of a game mm-hmm. they are fading away a little bit i think at least in the bigger triple a scene they are instead going for the digital goods nowadays for the special editions but there yeah. was this uh, period of time when special editions really meant that you get something very physical just usually the music mm-hmm. or the soundtrack you're gonna get and some kind of poster maybe like in the ultimas you get some trinket and it's usually some statue figure or something like that in the most big biggest special editions of games yeah statues uh, are were pretty mm-hmm. common in the biggest boxes yeah so i so there were special editions and collectors editions mm. they have different co- kind of names yeah but if it's, it's all the same and so you buy the game and you get some sort of extra stuff with it so i bought uh, brought stardew valley here as mm. an example those games come with some sort of extra stuff but uh i think the uh this fact that usually interests me more than this is indeed the stuff that comes with the ba- basic game and that was mm. always for me like a big selling point with the ultima games that those it's it's not about buying collectors editions or special editions it's mm. indeed you buy the basic game yeah and it's part it's sort of ingrained all this stuff that comes with the game it's imagined as part of being part of the gaming experience yeah and part of the reason why there were so much stuff in the old games because the graphics were worse you couldn't mm. really depict everything and the memory was very <laughs> limited. How you, yeah, yeah limited so you couldn't put all that text even if you wanted to put mm. all the text and material in the game you couldn't because they it would fry the computer <laughs> yeah <laughs> completely so there was a reason because why there was stuff coming with the games even the manuals mm-hmm because then you couldn't there were limits yeah. but nowadays there are no reasons mm-hmm. really yeah and so collectors editions these are being made even today there's collectors editions about like uh, Breath of the Wild had the one with or I think that game actually had like several collectors editions yeah the one has like the big uh, master sword statue in it mm. I think but we really didn't feel like trying to get that special edition mm. it didn't really like yeah i don't know why because i don't i don't actually i don't really like bringing a lot of stuff in in our house mm. and filling our house with stuff i really want them to mean something mm. for either of us Yeah. And the master sword, yeah, it's a statue, but it's not really something. I it's a cool statue, but mm. I don't feel that's part of the I want it to be there. I want to save the space for something I really really feel like I mm. want to have. Yeah. And it indeed it all comes down to what what you decide to put in these collectors editions mm. and i guess a bust or a statue or something can be very nice it can be something that you put on display but there's also like a lot of these things can have something like a stickers or art books are very common yeah also. art books are very common actually so and soundtracks yeah soundtracks and i think soundtracks are always neat i think mm. yeah And let's see what this okay. came Okay, first with, of so. all, this looks like a box or a wooden box. Yeah, so that's box already looks nice. Like a box. It looks, looks looks pretty neat. And then there's, uh, this is something that I'm kind of on the edge with. So this is kind of like, what do you say? Like something that you sweep. Microfiber your, yeah, micro, cloth. Microfiber cloth. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's microfiber specifically, but you get the idea. So you use it to wipe your uh, 
smartphone screen or in this case I guess you can use it to swipe the switch yeah. screen as well mm. and so on one hand I like that it's something that I could use mm. but on the other hand it looks so neat that I don't really want to waste it <laughs> so mm. it's like when you're getting you have these very nice looking soaps or erasers that yeah. are shaped like something special you don't really want to use them yeah. they're gonna vanish yeah and this is gonna get dirty yeah nice chicken pictures will get mm. dirty and so there's a comic book mm. that's a nice thing yeah that's i think i have i haven't played stardew valley but i feel like it's kind of explaining the are they sprites or something these little balls yeah that, go with, that they are because what i've seen of the game i didn't know there's these creatures that somehow come into play in this mm. game so as some someone who hadn't played at all i read that through and got a little bit idea of the world yeah so that's nice i think and it does indeed get you a little bit into the world mm. Then uh, there's this card. Yeah, I'd say that's a, yeah, that's an add-on. That's yeah, not really. actually. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a poster. So that's one other thing that games really tend, mm. uh, special editions get, tend to come with is posters. Yeah, that's a really nice picture that I really like to see in the, on the wall. Yeah. And okay. that's a that that's a very thing thin. thin paper so it's not gonna waste a lot of space yeah in this kind of special edition yeah and uh behind here was actually there's some uh, what do you even call them we have that thing on display you could probably yeah. bring it there here does it read somewhere let's see like this. so it's a wooden standy yeah Okay, wooden standy. Yeah, so the game also came with this wooden standy, and this is really neat. I think <laughs> it's something pretty unique. I'd imagine, especially when it comes to games and collectors' editions, and it looks really nice. And it's something that you can display yeah. on the shelf. And it kind of had that IKEA effect of <laughs> you having to. Uh, build it yourself mm. you had to pop it out, out of the frames and yeah and put the things together yeah it had this um tin uh, cover that you had to peel yeah, off yeah 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 right that was protecting the paintings and yeah. it has this they have been using some kind of burning laser or mm. something that could cut, cut out the pieces yeah. so it has this brown effect all mm. around it yeah, it smells really like a smoky wood. Mm. It's, it's a really nice smell. So all in all, yeah, that's it, like the highlight of this <laughs> special edition. Yeah, this could have been a t made of cardboard or plastic, mm. by the, but they went out of their way to make it wooden because it's it really fits the aesthetic and feel of the game. Yeah, having the all this of the wooden game. stuff. Yeah, so that's that's very neat. And it's so unique, like you said. Hmm. I haven't seen something like that. So if you have a special edition, something unique might be hmm. pretty good. Yeah. It, it will have this kind of wow effect. But even better if it's going to be something very neat. It's not just something you're going to waste somewhere. And hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty nice. Yeah. So overall, I think this was a pretty good collector's edition. Oh, actually the mm, last thing. Yeah really important this is there there's a deed of the land mm. so i think that's the as i mentioned with the uh, ultima games there's always something that you sort of get in the game mm. and you get it physically as well so this is more or less that so the whole game starts with the fact that you inherit your grandfather's farm mm. and Indeed, this is like your actual deed of the land that, yes, you now actually own that mm. farmland. That's a physical object that's been transported to you from the game. Mm -hmm. You get the feel and even has the gold, gold yeah. frames and everything. Gold frames and there's 
a section here where you can put your own oh, name yeah. in too so that is just mm. this is really neat it's like something you can yeah put up while you're playing the game it can re remind you of the fact that you yeah. you now own a farm i think that's that's even that's a piece of paper you could mm. do something like that in the standard game box the plastic thing it's it's gonna mm. be smaller but yeah. you could make a mini version of this and put it in the switch covers yeah there's the place for it yeah it wouldn't fit but you could put some mm -hmm. uh, so it needs to be like square a square version of yeah, it basically half the size about mm. but still if, if that would have come with the game even that thing it's gonna feel very special mm -hmm. and i guess you can argue that well of course i'm glad that this isn't folded but mm. you could even give a, like a folded version of yeah. this the folding wouldn't be that bad because they might do that in the real world, having yeah. it in an envelope. That would be nicer. It would it's yeah. in an envelope and you open it and out Take comes out. this. Yeah. And it has a seal and everything. Mm. So that would be, yeah, that would be mm. really nice. Okay. I'm just going for what would be this very, this minimum effort you could m do. Mm -hmm. And even, and even still use the standard box. You, you wouldn't have to go this route. And just have fun with a piece of paper. Hmm. You could do like deed of land. It could be map. It can be comic, like we've shown a couple of comics mm -hmm. already. There's there's this space, and you could have you could be very creative about it. Yeah. And even better if it's some actual item that will transfer you into the game somehow. Hmm. Comics are good at bringing you the sense of the world and those physical objects like deeds of land and maps give you the sense of mm, this is something from the world mm. and you're gonna go out there with it yeah and uh, another example i wanted to show mm. with the stardew valley i don't think this came with the game itself but of course a strategy guide is one of those mm. things that Although they don't necessarily come with the game, but uh, they're something that's often bought together. Mm. But the problem with these in modern times is that games get patched a lot. Yeah. And mm. that's why these uh, get uh, outdated mm. in the end. And even with this uh, book, the uh, problem is that this isn't, uh, this doesn't have everything that the latest version of the game has. Mm. But the uh, positive thing here is that the place where I bought this, they actually send you the digital version as well. And as the book gets updated, mm. you get an updated version of the digital version. Mm. So I do sort of have a digital version of this that is the latest version. Yeah. But still, it would be nice to have, of course, the physical version as well. Yeah. Looking at the pages, it really, they really put the effort in. Yeah, Once this again. looks really nice. It's all, it all hand-drawn, mm. every single page, all sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's essentially using all the tricks that the street gangs manual did, having these custom pictures in there and mm -hmm. explaining, introducing the characters, bringing the items in this book and explaining you what they do and what you can do in it. So it's yeah. kind of a very much effort. This is very mm, it, thick book. It's very thick <laughs> and it's, I like the shinies here. Mm. It's all silvery in the front and the back. Mm. All the, uh, what do you even call these like outlines of the book? Yeah, this is, we really like, I mean, we have some books here and when it's look this old timey, like mm. it's really gonna be neat in the shelf somewhere, mm. even in like, like, the, like the front cover or even the spine is gonna look very mm. nice yeah. somewhere in the, in our themed <laughs> book shelf. Yeah. So that's neat. It's not very essential. And if I had to choose. If if you could if I could customize my special edition, I necessarily wouldn't want that 
guidebook, but mm. that's that's also another challenge in these special editions. What people do value in mm. having in games. So when you make a special edition, you either just go with the template route of giving uh, this poster and the soundtrack and the some kind of statue, these standard things, mm. and hope that's what people will want with their games. Yeah. So another example is uh, when the first Super Mario Maker came mm. out, it came with this booklet. And I'm pretty sure this isn't even a special edition. This mm. is just a regular edition. So you basically had to get this book with the mm. game. And this is sort of like it doubles as an art book, but also gives you some, some sort of hints on what you can create with the Super Mario Maker. Mm. <laughs> so kind of a yeah, inspiration for yeah. your starting starting because you can do so much in the in that game building your own mm -hmm. stages that it's pretty neat having this kind of hey here's you here's what you can do and here's what these enemies can be yeah programmed to do yeah and i think this works pretty well as uh, i mentioned with the ultima games that you sort of have this like an uh, alchemist table mm. and this is this sort of tries to drive the same kind of effect in mm. that you're building your level in Mario Maker and you have this on your side to sort of open up and look for inspiration. Mm. And as you mentioned, the important thing with all these books is that the game itself has to work in a way that you can pause it and look look at something like this. And mm. indeed in Mario Maker, when you're making a stage, that you're not in any sort of hurry. Mm. You're just building the blocks as you as slowly or as fast as you want. Mm. So it tries to have the same effect. I think the problem for me was that it didn't really, for me, it didn't really work in that sense. I, I'm not quite sure why, but I think it's because it's, it tries to be like an art book at the same time that it, mm. it's kind of hard to use as a sort of book for inspiration yeah it's yeah or i would say it's the you go through it get some inspiration but if you want to get back to it so what was this thing i could do that it was somewhere in there it's kind of messy in their structure that hmm. the stuff is there's sometimes there's screenshots and there's sometimes there's illustrations and yeah. so on. So and it's a little bit messy if you want to think of this as uh, some kind of manual or something mm. that you could, you know, where where the hints were and open it up. Yeah. And I think looking looking at it, there's mm. these codes there. So I think you could input the code in yeah. the game and sort of get some sort of example. So I guess it... You can load the stage, which shown is on depicted the page. here. Yeah. yeah. So they try to sort of make it an like an interactive experience mm. in that sense. But uh, that's pretty neat because you could just have these pictures, but you can also get the get this stage yeah, and start and actually see how, with it. Yeah, see how it works in the game mm. or how it's made. And I think I'd imagine that if I was younger, this would have been like an incredible experience. I would have mm. checked all the codes and so on. But uh, back when we did get, get this game, I don't think I was that involved in that sort of thing, I guess. Mm. I just like trying things out in the game. It really depends on what kind of player you are. You, you could be the builder or the maker mm -hmm. and make the stages and upload them in the, for people to use or try to um clear them yeah or maybe you were more in the mood to play those mm. stages than to make them and yeah. you made a couple of them and you it was you had pretty neat ideas yeah with them but if it's it doesn't click for you so then there's no shame or 
we can't really say if this mm-hmm. would work for the person who really wanted to dive into the game and start building their own stages. Mm-hmm. Maybe they get a lot of out of this book. Yeah, I actually now that, now that I think about it, I imagine it would have worked better if I just had more time mm. because we. Like back when I was young, I used to indeed play street gangs a lot. Mm. E- even though it's not a very long game, you can play it, or you have to basically play it through in one sitting mm. because the password system is so utterly confusing or really badly made. <laughs> mm. So if I had all that time in my hands, I would have definitely gone through this book as well. Yeah, that's one of the big problems with this stuff having the time Mm -hmm. when you have full-time job and other stuff you gotta do in Mm. your life. Yeah. So maybe that's part of this, how you feel about all this bag coming Mm. with your game. Yeah. So one hand, I do miss having all of that swag, but at the same time, yeah, I do feel like it's, it is nice having most of it in the in the game. Mm. Uh, The last example that I can remember right now, of course, from once again, we're still talking about recent year stuff. So Mm. there's indeed. uh, Okay, so this is from long enough that this game does come with a manual. Mm. Okay, (laughs) this is actually a really bad manual. So this is just it's basically just this one page or this one yeah, spread spread yeah. in like 20 different languages mm. and so it looks like it's a really hefty manual but it's actually just the controls <laughs> yeah and the legal information yeah or something and like nothing that. else the system information mm. so uh <clears throat> but uh the good thing about this game this is actually this is a pretty short game as well. It's just two chapters. I think we played both of them in one evening. Mm. But it did come with, I think, uh, two separate posters. Mm. The posters are actually really nice. So one of them shows some some sort of the, uh, the Watchmen timeline to the start of the uh, comic or the movie, depending on which mm. one you you'd like to watch. And the other poster is really neat in that it's designed well so that uh, we already talked about the creases with these paper posters and how they're sort of really annoying. Mm. But the way this poster was creased was that the crease is in a section where you can sort of either have uh, both Night Owl and Rorschach, the characters in this game, Mm. at the same time, or you can sort of fold it in a way where you have only Night Owl or only Rorschach. Mm. So that's really neat. Mm. And considering this is some maybe a little bit cheaply made license game, yeah. <laughs> which was pretty fun, mainly because it had a co-op also, we mm. could have a lot of fun screwing around with there. And it was a neat game with a couple of neat posters coming along. Mm-hmm. So when I was talking about this low effort, low minimum effort thing, they really did that. Yeah, they really game. nailed it, mm. I'd say. And there's another example, I think, with the posters, uh, a game called Aerobis, which I have. Uh, or Aero, Aero, how do you say? <laughs> Aero. Aerobis, <laughs> yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a game on this, uh, I guess it's also on the PC, but or I guess it's on a lot uh, many uh, different platforms. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have the Super Nintendo version, and it also comes with a poster. And the idea in the game is that you're running an airline business, mm. and the poster sort of shows how your work set there should look. I think like uh, for me that that's a really neat thing, and it has always felt like. That's that's the lowest effort that I do sort of miss that every game more or less would come with a good poster. Mm. And actually, now I remember another example. So uh, with Grand Theft Auto, the very first game that came with two sets of posters. 
and they were two-sided posters. So on one side you had sort of this nice graphical image and on the other side you had a map mm. of the city. And once again that's like, I, I, I just really like maps. Even mm. though you can have them in the game and sure they work fine there, but I always like having like a separate map as well. Mm. But that's very, well, that's also in the past, but when you go in the go visit a town or an, another country, you used to get a map for yourself, a paper map. Hmm. You go on this adventure of as a tourist, hmm. travel somewhere. But nowadays everyone has some phones, so yeah. there's no paper maps. But it's kind of like that having hmm. this map of this place you're gonna go to. Except yeah. in in the case of a video game, it's gonna be in the comfort of your home, but mm -hmm. the same effect, I think, applies in there, too. Yeah, and it really is. Mm -hmm. We have a, a bunch of maps up there, so it's really nice looking at them every now and then and just remembering it, mm. all the adventures we've had in those places. Mm. So it, it works. A map is something that works really well as something that, you know, it it sort of keeps you in the game, not because the whole point of all this uh, swag for me is that the important thing is sort of to let you ex enjoy the game even while you're not playing. And mm. map is something that also, or a poster, even if it's not a map, mm. it's something that also works even after you stop playing the game, even when you're done with the game, mm. it sort of stays with you as the map or poster that's hanging mm. on the wall. So I think as long as you do the poster or the map well, then it's something really nice. And I think that that's like the uh, minimum effort swag that I really hope that most games worth their mm. salt would do. Yeah, take this piece of paper and somehow make it work with their mm. game, either the posters route or the Land of de deed of land, rules, yeah. something with the this it's real estate even still in switch covers it's even smaller but this there's even the, there's the space still you could put something in there mm -hmm. but they, it's about the costs I think hmm. Hmm? yeah <laughs> but I think that summarizes it pretty well the uh, take that piece of paper and transform it to something magical something. Mm. Meaningful. I mm. think that yeah. that's how it really works. And then you can add on to it with other stuff. Like we showed you the Stardew Valley stuff and others. Mm -hmm. If you have the time. Yeah. And resources to make it even bigger or even something like pictured book of text and magic reagents mm. manuals yeah but yeah we always want to think about this minimum thing that you could do that wouldn't take too much of your time but mm. you could just add it in there and it would just up the game a little bit and a lot for some people mm -hmm. some people would really appreciate it and they really want to put it somewhere to showcase yes i got this game and i have this Thing from that game, mm -hmm. yeah. And you could do, as we said, with a piece of paper. You mm -hmm. can do it with a piece of paper if yeah. you are just creative with it. Mm -hmm. And I think actually a good uh, advice here would be like, I either go like that route, which is you know take the minimum amount of. Well, I wouldn't say the minimum amount of effort, mm -hmm. but like the poster or the map is like a really good choice of course. Uh, the one thing I usually ask people to consider when they're doing that is that it's not too small. Mm. I think uh, so we have the Octopath Traveler mm. uh, poster here and this is pretty small so I think it works fine with this side so it has an image but the other side I think was a map yeah. and if it's this small it doesn't really work that well as yeah. a map. You can treat the text or see the locations that well yeah. as opposed to this 
ultimas. There's mm-hmm. even a lot of details of yes. the towns and mm. There's, everything. Yeah, it, it, it even has the uh, names of the towns and everything. And it's done in the uh, the runic language of the mm. actual world. So you... Uh, in the uh, last last games, you don't really have to learn that language, but in the uh, in four, five, and six, I think it was really important that you also learn to read those <laughs> runic mm. symbols, or mm. you're gonna get stuck whenever you come by a signpost or mm. whatever. Mm. But uh, the so that's that's sort of the minimum amount of effort we hope that most game makers. If you are planning to do any kind of physical release, mm. put some kind of uh, effort into doing a good post or a map in it. Mm. And the other route is that you sort of go town. <laughs> go pull. to town? <laughs> yeah, you go to town and indeed you do something extraordinary. And it can be a small thing like this mm. or it can be like uh, with fallout series there's the pip boy mm. and accessory mm. thingy and the helmet and stuff like that so either either do something like a uh, small but really enhancing or do something really big something mm. that's really really ingrained into the world mm. so is there any swag that you personally yeah. like yeah because did, did we forget to mention something <laughs> that's very common and didn't bring yeah. it up some in somewhere in this video hmm. or is there some game that did that really well or something do you have ideas that would be very neat yeah something you'd like to actually see hmm. and because, haven't seen yeah because hmm. there's actually i didn't mention this previously but some games i get put, put stickers into them mm. and that's something that uh, I can see some people really liking that but I personally hate stickers once mm. again because there's something that sort of it's part of the uh, package but at the same time if you use it then it's sort of spent somewhere mm. I personally don't really like stickers but some people probably like that because it's something cheap and something you can just put somewhere and mm. so on but what is your preferred mm. swag with the gaming gaming uh, mm. stuff. Tell us about that in the comments. And I am Gerolf. This is Vyandil. Mm. And we are the Basket. Thank yes. you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>